part of the story we wanted to tell you this morning um, is to showcase an entrepreneur who has completely rethought a category. Not only rethought a category, but maybe invented one. Um, because my guess is that uh, prior to two or three years ago, you did not think that the doorbell was a category. <laughs> um, but Jamie Simonoff is here to prove you wrong. Please join me in welcoming Jamie to a signal. Yeah. I'm gonna give you, yeah, yeah. Great. So I thought I was a category. Thanks, John, for telling me I'm not a category. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the truth is that uh, I, I can't tell you how many people laughed at me for uh, creating a doorbell at the time, uh, friends, family, and investors. Um, and one of the things that brought us through being able to take this product out, uh, being literally laughed at, um, was the mission. And so part of why I'm standing here today, or a big, probably the biggest part of why I'm standing here today in front of you, uh, is our mission around why we thought this category needed to exist. And it wasn't just about thinking that we could sell some product. Um, and uh, what makes it so amazing that I'm standing here today is that uh, about three and a half years ago, that was my office. Um, uh, Rings started in my garage uh, in Los Angeles, California. At the time, I was working on, it started in 2010, uh, I was working on a gardening startup called Snap Garden in my lab called Edison Junior. And uh, when your lab is in your garage, it's not as uh, amazing as you think, but... Um, and Snap Garden is something that I would have loved to have pitched to P&G. Uh, <laughs> sadly, Ring is not something I can pitch to P&G. But, um, so Snap Garden, modular gardening system that never worked. Uh, but my garage is in the back of the house, the front door is in the front of the house, anyone that came over to the house, I could not hear them, no wireless doorbells worked, thank God, and uh, I decided that I needed to build my own doorbell that went to my, actually I first looked for a doorbell that went to my phone, none existed, and so I looked for a door, so I decided to build my own uh, Wi-Fi doorbell that went to my phone. Uh, that's about, let's see, that's yeah, about the actual size that was on my front door. Um, you can imagine the pleasure that my wife had of her beautiful sort of like where the plants were and all the stuff in the front door and there was this like gigantic, like, you know, soldered together thing on it. Uh, but the most amazing thing was that, that my wife, uh, instead of sort of saying, please rip this thing off and never do that again and get back in the garage, she actually loved it because she felt safer at home with it. Um, she, I, we had at the time a three-year-old. Uh, I was traveling, and you know, at like eight o'clock at night, someone would come to the door. It's dark out. She'd have to, you know, we live right on the street. She'd have to kind of open it up, talk to the person. They're selling magazines. Never felt comfortable with it. And with this, she could actually answer it from her phone. She felt comfortable. She felt like she was always home. And that was the, what really sort of got us, uh, myself and the team into this business was this idea that we stumbled on something where it wasn't just another security product, it wasn't just another gadget, it was actually something that, that not only could make my wife feel safer, but part of why she felt safer is it was actually doing something that no one had ever done before, which is pre-crime. So it was actually preventing a crime before it happened, and that's when we came up with this mission of reducing crime in neighborhoods. Very different than catching criminals, very different than reporting criminals. It's not an alarm system that tells you after someone's rifling through your underwear drawer. This is something that we realized we could actually prevent crimes before they happen by delivering presence into neighborhoods. And it's, it's what drove the company from, from the garage to where we are today. Um, it's really what has taken us sort of all the way through. Um, it's been our guiding light. We almost went bankrupt four times in the company. Looking back, I almost definitely went personally bankrupt with it uh, and probably lost, would have lost the house that I uh, had the garage in. Um, and so I'm glad it did work out. It also let me tell uh, one of the more famous investors in the country to stuff it. Doorbell was even featured on ABC Shark Tank. Because all burglars ring the doorbell first. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though, Mark? That's actually true. Burglars are not usually violent criminals. They want to see if someone's home. They want the opportunity to go into a house that does not have people in it. So it's actually true. People do ring the door. So. <laughs> um, I think I was told not to swear. I usually say that's when I got to tell Mark Cuban to go himself. Um, but. Um, 
It was originally called Doorbot, the original company, and then we changed the name to Ring. Uh, again, I think a lot of you are in branding. I, I, you could probably imagine why we went from Doorbot to Ring. Um, <laughs> it, it did work out as a better name. Um, today we have, you know, we started out as the doorbell company. We have four, four doorbells in the market now, the good, better, best strategy. We have four different cameras for outside of the home. Um, we have a lot of accessories. We say we build around rings of security, the ring of security around your front door, which is the most important place that you want security and want presence, the ring of security around your house, and then the ring of security around your neighborhood. Um, today, we probably put in jail about one person per day uh, off of our network, and we probably prevent about 100 burglaries a day. Um, so the scale of, thank you. And inside of the company, that has been our KPI. Uh, we are not a revenue KPI company. Uh, we literally are a company around impact and how much impact we make. Luckily, because I'm not Gandhi, um, it does turn out that if you're trying to reduce crime at scale and you have a product, that means you have to sell more of that product to reduce more crime. So it does kind of work into that, but obviously the, having it be the mission first and not the revenue first, it, it just kind of, I think, is a better motivator for everyone. I, I actually I was talking to someone in the green room today. I think money is the worst motivator in the world. Um, I think that doing something else is great, and then having money be part of the reward for that is, is a much better thing uh, if you can do that. Um, we are uh, a widely distributed product. Again, being here, this is probably not widely to you guys, but for us, uh, we're in over 16,000 retail stores in the US. Uh, learning the retail business has been a, uh, an amazing thing, sometimes pleasurable, sometimes not. Um, and um, we've grown so uh, literally three and a half years ago, we were maxing out at eight people in my garage. My wife said that the bathroom smelled like a men's locker room and that we had to leave the house. So uh, in November of 2013 is when we got our first office. Uh, and now we're 1,100 people in over eight offices globally. Um, Hi, my name is Yossi. I'm brand manager at Ring. We're really excited to head out to the Wilshire Park neighborhood and install some rings. This small community, which is maybe a half a mile radius, is actually hit with over one burglary every other week. We're going to try to get a, a large percentage of the homes here to actually have rings on them. Who's here to install your rings? Oh, yeah! <laughs> with the hope that if we're able to have enough cameras in the neighborhood and work with the police, that we can actually reduce the crime in this community. So at this doorbell, you can see and talk to anyone at your front door from anywhere. Whoa. So we went around different houses and talked to the customers, showed them how to use the device, installed yeah. it for them. Pretty cool experience. Some of the customers, the way they reacted, yeah. it was unbelievable. Thank you very much. The whole neighborhood is really excited about this. In Los Angeles, police revealing a six-month pilot program using the tool helped reduce burglaries in one neighborhood by more than 50%. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here. Compared to the same time the previous year, that particular neighborhood had a significant reduction in burglaries, approximately 55%. When I founded Ring about five years ago in my garage in Los Angeles, it was with the idea of reducing crime in neighborhoods. Today we're a 250-person team that's around that idea. Now to keeping your home safe, a high-tech gadget is having high-yield results when it comes to catching criminals. A doorbell camera ringing right to your phone, catching potential thieves on camera from Nevada to California to Tennessee. Police in Los Angeles say they are helping keep criminals away. So, thank you. So again, to that KPI thing, we also have in our culture sort of this idea that we don't celebrate uh, victories. We continue to work on the problems. Um, I can say this, this was one of those days we, uh, we celebrated at Ring. So, um, you know, reducing crime, being able to, to have that sort of that KPI and to do that, that, that to me is the culmination of what that mission did. And then what's amazing is we were able to build a great business uh, around that and actually, you know, also return to our investors. Um, and again, since this is PNG, and I think you guys do a lot of marketing, we were also able to turn uh, what we did there with uh, what you saw with the Wilshire Park neighborhood and this whole ring neighborhoods. Uh, we were able to bring in maybe a little bit of celebrity backing and also turn it into something a little bit more marketing friendly. Oh, wait, hold on. I'll start it.
Let's see if I can do this. At Ring, we have over one million happy customers, and today I brought one to help me install some more. Let's get to work, Jamie. Let's do this. Let's make these neighborhoods safe. We proved at the LAPD that having 10% of the homes with Rings, we're able to reduce crime by 50% in the neighborhood. Who is it? It's Shaq and Jamie, oh, ma'am. So Shaq and I just put this up for you. We got a new camera, floodlight, motion detection. Here's the view from it. How do you like the floodlight cameras? I like them. I want to see the whole yard. That's perfect. There we go. Nice little speaker. What you got on there? It's fantastic. The picture. I can see him. I can see everything that's going on. It's awesome. I can be anywhere and see who yeah. comes to my door. Look at that, Shaq. The whole backyard. You can oh, see it. Oh, look at that. Right. That's nice. Beautiful. We've been busted. It works. I love making neighborhoods safe. We're always home, baby. Thank you. So, uh, so yeah. So that's that's our that's our shtick. Uh, we've been able to uh, you know start with this mission that really drove us through all the tough times. And then I think turn it into not only a positive, obviously, what we're doing for the neighborhoods, but it really even integrate it into the business in every single way. Um, as you can imagine, a kid growing up in Jersey who had never met anyone uh, to be able to do a commercial with Shaq was a, was a pretty cool thing. So uh, my email's here. My email's also on every single box. That's 1.5 million and counting. Um, it is my real email. Uh, it's just another thing that I believe deeply in is, uh, is having no filter between you and your customers. So, uh, also, if anyone here, please reach out, jay at ring.com. So thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. Thanks, John. Thanks. 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 Hi, I, uh, I was curious how you got, you know, did you call Shaq's agent? Like, how did that happen? So, so Shaq, Shaq went to Best Buy and bought a ring and then reached out and said, I'd like to meet you. Um, Really? Shaq says he wants your to email, meet you. Because you your, I mean. your email is on the box. Uh, it, it, was through, it ended up being a little bit more than that. But yeah, I mean, literally said, we were at CES, and he said, I'd like to meet you. And I said, you know, where? I'll go to your suite or whatever. He said, no, I'll come to your booth. Um, <laughs> nice. So this past year, uh, we had a Shaq at our well, booth. It's an, <laughs> it's an inspiring story. Hey, so thank, thank you very, you very much. much. And All again, right. thank you for having Take me. Take care. Thanks.